Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. However, if you're new here, my name is Cory. Today's video, we're going to be deep diving into how I make my stencils. I really like to utilize this kind of DIY in special cases when I can't find the desired patch that I would like to put on my garment. Or if you have a very funny shaped panel, you can make it the exact size that you're looking for so it'll fit perfectly. Let me mention that this is not a new form of DIY. This is not a DIY created by myself in particular. I was actually inspired to do these stencils by my best friend Jake Macon. He's a fantastic, fantastic DIY king. He is so good at making things from scratch. He amazes me all the time. So he kind of showed me a couple different stencils that he had made in his past. He has used all sorts of mediums from, I think even once he used a uh, old milk carton that's plastic to make these. He didn't suggest it. He said it was pretty thick plastic, but he has done it. And that really inspired me to learn how to create these. And that's why I'm coming to you guys today is because I think I finally have it down to a science. So what are you going to need? Not too, too much. I feel like this is a pretty basic DIY. It doesn't take a plethora of things. The the big one, the one that I use constantly, is a computer screen. I was so blessed to be able to purchase a hand-me-down Mac desktop, so I do have quite a large screen to work with. If you do not have a large computer screen to work with at home, I do suggest maybe hitting up a local library. A lot of libraries are really cool with you using their computers. However, you do want a screen that's going to be large enough to fit the entire stencil across. I personally use an old cutting board. It's just one that broke in half by chance in my life, so I turned it into my DIY cutting board. You're also going to need some tape, which I personally just use the painter's tape because it is non-abrasive, it leaves no residue, and it peels off like a breeze. Some acrylic paint is key. I don't think it matters what brand you use. I have a cheap one and I have an expensive one. They both seem to work the same. Doesn't really matter, just get your butt down to a craft store and buy some acrylic paint. Here's the kicker. You need some glue. However, I want to stress that using a glue that is going to remain tacky is very important. And tacky just means sticky. So I want you to know how important it is because if you start to glue your patch on one side and you get to the end and it's already dried on the other end, you're not going to have a good time and you're not going to have a good seal. So personally, I know it sounds wacky and out of this world, but I used it once and I haven't gone back because it works so good. Probably a bit of an expensive option, but I use my old <laughs> eyelash glue. It just remains tacky for eternity. You also want to make sure that the glue that you are using does not leave residue on your clothing. That's another big one. The way to make sure that happens is not to stick down your stencil until you really know that the glue on the back is tacky, not goopy. You don't want the glue to be a nice like stark white color, goopy, because it might fuse into your garment. I wish I had more advice to give you on other glues that stay tacky, but I am just unsure. I've never tried anything different that worked as well <laughs> as the eyelash glue. So I like to use an X-Acto knife for this practice. I have used multiple things. However, something with a handle is the key. I've also just used straight up razor blades that my uh, boyfriend brings home from work. However, you don't really have the dexterity or the precision, and it's also very dangerous. So, X-Acto knife is the way to go. I like to use a sponge to apply the paint because I find that it gives a very, very nice, even coverage. I like to hang on to my old beauty blenders because once they have kicked the old dusty trail and I've been using them for far too long, they work really well for crafts. However, there are sponge tip applicators at most craft stores. So you could use that as well. Here's a key why I like to use the clear plastic so that you can see exactly where the panel lies and how big you want it to be. 
I have a secret ingredient, not so secret, it's my favorite thing that I've ever found at a craft store. It is this mixing medium that you mix with your paint that makes the paint fabric paint. I swear by this stuff and it's lasted me years and years and years on one bottle. First step would be to size how big you want your stencil to be. How I do that is laying down my jacket and putting the sheet of plastic over top. You can draw out a general shape to show you how big you want it to be or you can just go straight in with the scissors and cut it to the size that you require. Next step is find the image that you would like to use on your stencil. Keep in mind that you want to try and do this as simple as possible, so try and find a band logo that's pretty bold, big letters, pretty easy. I like to upload my images to a website called PicMonkey. It's just a basic editing software website that I use all the time. The reason that I like this website is because you can zoom in and out as far as you like. You can usually get your image to be a nice good size on your screen with that website. Now, I just tape the plastic on top of my computer straight up. Then you just begin to trace around the letters. Make sure if there's any letters with a hole inside, I'm going to say A's and O's. Make sure that you make connecting bits so that once you cut out your stencil, you'll still have that hole in the middle. This will create a little bit of a hole in your stencil that you will have to go in and fill in later. Once you have it all traced out, I like to peel it off the computer and put it onto my cutting board. And that's where the X-Acto knife comes in and I start to cut out the letters very slowly, very carefully. Do not rush yourself. The slower you go, the more perfect your stencil will end up. Once all of the letters are cut out, I like to hang on to these little bits that come out because you can use them in future DIYs. You can also use them to make a inverted patch, if you will. Begin to glue the back of your stencil. Make sure it's the back because you want it to be a forward facing stencil. I begin gluing and I try to take my time with this. Like I said, the glue remains tacky so I don't feel rushed. I just want to make sure that I get the glue right on the seam, right on the end of that letter, so that once you stick it to your fabric, no paint will seep underneath. I like to just drape some fabric over top of my stencil once it's glued down onto the piece of clothing. And I like to add a couple of heavy books on top just to make sure it's really pressing that glue into your fabric. I like to leave it there for about 20-30 minutes just to make sure. Once you remove all of that weight and the fabric, try not to mess with the corners very much because you want it to continue to stay put. And now I start to mix the fabric medium into the paint just to make it so that it fuses itself into your garment and stays for a very long time. I've done it with and without the medium. Without the medium, it does crack away, it does age much faster. So medium, totally worth it. I like to wet my sponge and then wring out all the excess wetness <laughs> to make sure that less paint gets sucked into the sponge. Once you're all good to go, I like to use padding motions, up and down stippling motions to get the paint an even coat. Every time I finish a letter, I go back to the beginning of that letter and do the second coat right away. I don't wait very long for it to dry. I just like it to be one and done each letter. First coat, second coat, boom, move on to the next letter. Found that if I do the whole patch and then I go back for a second coat, the peel off is not quite as satisfying. And the moment that you've been waiting for, that peel, oh, so satisfying. I love it. You never know what's going to happen. There could be tons of mistakes. There could be none. You never know until you peel it off. If you do find a couple spaces where the paint did seemingly seep underneath of your patch a little bit, don't sweat it. You can use Sharpie markers. You can use fabric markers. You can use Sharpie paint markers. I've used them all. You go over the edges of your stencil and make sure that everything is nice and crisp. 
That is something that takes a lot of concentration and some straight, steady hand work, but I believe in you. If you're lucky and you came out unscathed with no mistakes, I praise you. It's only happened to me a couple times and it's, it's a fantastic feeling. But, like I said, you can always fix those mistakes. This is the outcome of the most recent stencil that I made. I lucked out and everything worked accordingly. I didn't have to fix very much, but it's looking pretty good. I sincerely hope that this video was somewhat helpful to you in explaining how I create these stencils. I have made them big, I have made them small, medium. I've made them every shape and size that you can imagine, and every single time it's a satisfaction that cannot be measured. So I really hope you guys take these little tips into account next time you guys are DIYing, and uh, please let me know if you do. Tag me in any photos of your DIY on Instagram. Love seeing what you guys are creating all the time. Just so cool to me. Thank you guys so, so very much for continuing to stay tuned, enjoying my content. Let me know in a comment down below if you guys have any questions. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And I will see you guys in the next video. Love you lots. Take care. So a lot of you have been asking about my skincare routine. <laughs> you my YouTuber now? Yeah. That's what we do. Except for me, I don't talk about shit. Something about skincare. Okay, I think it's good. There's lots of room, right? Lots of room, yep. Pow! 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 Oh, are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! Skincare routine! <laughs> this is how you really are. <laughs>